Hello and welcome to day three of Advent of Code Solutions. Uh, let's just jump into it. Okay, so day three, I have written out a simplified description of the problem. Um, the input that we'll see today is a map of trees. And an interesting part about this is the map of trees will be copied infinitely to the right. So let me just show you what the input kind of looks like. Um, so it'll look something like this. And part of the assumption that you have to make about the input is that this pattern will be repeated forever in the rightward direction. And what we're going to be doing is walking this graph or this, this input here, and you're gonna move right three and then down one, starting from this position here, uh, which I like to think of as zero, zero being the, the top left. And the important part about the movement here is it's like a teleport. It's not a, um, it's not a walk. So if you were walking, if you were going right three, you don't actually hit these three trees here. Uh, you just immediately go to this spot here, and when it's a dot, it's not a tree, and when it's a octothorpe, it's a it's a tree. So you would not hit one there, you would hit one here, um, you would not hit one here, then you would wrap around here and you know hit hit this one here, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and continue to follow that downwards. Um, and the answer for part one is count how many trees you hit going to the bottom. And in part two, the problem changes a little bit, and it tries a bunch of different. Uh, we're going to try a bunch of different routes downwards, and oh, this is supposed to be two by one, whoops. Uh, and then we multiply all of those together, um, and multiply, that's how to words. Uh, and so we're going to implement both parts of that. Uh, fortunately, the parsing for this one is relatively trivial. Um, we're just going to use s.splitlines. That's going to give us our list of strings. We'll use that list of strings later to do the actual problem part, but the parsing here dead simple. And if we you know, run this parsing.py, you'll see that we get a list of strings. And I've just taken that over to part one to start working on this. You can see that same list of strings here. And uh, the expected value that we get for this test input, this is the test input from the problem, is seven. And the way that I thought about this when I was working on this problem is we have a coordinate pair. We have our x and our y, and we're going to walk that along our particular, you know, coordinate changes to get to the bottom here. And so when I started implementing this, I started with x equals y equals zero. This just initializes both of those variables to zero. And um, one way that I could do this is a for loop over our input. Uh, we'll actually find that that's worse later, but um, I'm gonna show you that that now, and then we can you know adjust that later. And actually we don't need to assign y in that case. So we'll just skip that. Um, and so we can say for uh, line in input, and we could also get y here if we needed it. We could do y in enumerates this, uh, but we don't actually need y for this problem at all. So I'm gonna undo that. And um, at each line, we are going to check the x position and see if it has one of these. We also need to keep track of our total. And at the end, we'll return our total. So if line at x is equal to the tree, then we're gonna increment total. That's that's the basic problem of this. Um, but the hard part is changing x in a way that works properly. So the, the naive approach would just be, you know, x plus equals three. And, um, you know, hope, hope that works. But you'll see if we run this, uh, python three part one dot pi, you'll see that we eventually get index out of range, and that's when it's gone past the end of one of these lines. And when I saw the, the wrapping thing, a thing went into my head that like, oh, we need to make sure that x doesn't get too big, otherwise it goes out of this. And we need to make sure that it wraps around to the beginning. And if you've worked with, um, you know, modular arithmetic before, this problem should sound familiar. Um, but if you haven't worked with a modular arithmetic, I'll show you a way that's a little bit easier to think about. Uh, so the easier way to think about is, you know, if x goes past the end, if x is greater than or equal to the length of a line, then we need to do something to shift it back an exact width of the line so that it's back within bounds. And so we can do x minus equals length of line, and this will, you know, keep it into that, that range. So if it, you know, uh, I actually drew a diagram for uh, some people on stream that looked something like this. Uh, three, four, five. And let's say we start at i equals zero. So i is pointing at 
this item here. And we do, you know, add three to that. So then you get to this map, which looks like, uh, oh, we can say i equals three here. So now instead of that, it looks at this position here. And then again, we add three to this. And so I would become six, uh, but six is past the end of our array. So it'd be, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three, and we're somewhere out in no man's land here. Um, but if we, if we add three, so that becomes six, and then we subtract the length of this array, we get one. Um, and if we were to do the manual wrapping, this would be one, two, three, and that's in fact index one. So this, this actually readjusts to you know, minus, minus five uh, becomes one. And so you can see that this would end up here. And so that's kind of how you can think about this is subtracting the length of this. Now, um, I actually, you know, thought of the modular arithmetic here, which is a little bit different and a little bit simpler. So instead of doing it like this, actually, let's run this and make sure that it works. So you can see we get seven. Um, instead of doing the subtraction, you can actually do this with modular arithmetic and do x mod equals length of line. And what this just does is it, uh, the mod is a remainder operator. So if you divide by the length of the line, you will get, you know, usually zero, but sometimes one division. And then the remainder value is the amount that you would, you would wrap around for. And so you'll see that, that this also works. Um, and that's, that's how you can keep this going here. Um, but that's part one. And, you know, part one is pretty straightforward. I'm actually going to copy all of part one to part two because we're going to reuse some of this code for part two. So let's copy part one.py to part two.py. Oh, I forgot to talk about algorithmic efficiency. Uh, this one is not actually that algorithmically complicated. We're just doing an on loop here. And then none of this in here is, is looping. So overall, it is still O of n. We look at part two. Um, again, O n here. Oh, and, uh, but part two asks that we do a more complicated thing. And let me put that so it's on screen. We need to check each of these different paths downward and make sure that those, or, and count the number of trees for each of those and then multiply them together. Uh, now, when I saw this, like a bunch of different paths, my, my brain was thinking, oh, I should take what I already wrote and put it into a function. And that way I can reuse the code that I wrote. And so what I did for part one is I took this compute function and I changed it into um, compute helper and helper took both an X and a Y because you know both X and Y are variable here. Oh, wait, I did this wrong. This should be one X, two. Two in the Y direction, one in the X. Otherwise this problem is, is much, much easier. Um, and we need to adjust our solution here to handle both variable X and variable Y. Fortunately, the variable X is much, much easier. Um, you can just, instead of having X plus equals uh, oh, we'll make this x under x sub d and y sub d for the difference. Um, so replacing the three with x sub d makes this a lot easier. Now the y is actually a lot trickier here, and we can't actually use this form of the loop. Well, we can with some tricks, but um, I find that those tricks are a lot more confusing. So I'm actually going to change this into a while loop and give us a y coordinate up here. So instead of saying for line and input, we'll say while y is less than length of input, uh, line equals input y. Um, and this actually would have worked for the same the same one before, um, but yeah. we need it here because yd can be two in this case. And at the end, we're going to do y plus equals y sub d. And then for the most part, we've actually implemented our entire helper there. That's that's the, the hard part of this problem is transforming the first part of the problem into the second part of the, second part of the problem. Let me get that get rid of that comment before. And then all we need to do is combine all these together. Oh, I didn't I blew away the value here. It's, I think it's supposed to be 336. Uh, but then compute just becomes um, you know call this compute helper a bunch of times and look at what the answers are. So we would do return compute. 1, 1 times compute 3, 1 times compute 5, 1 times compute 7, 1 uh, times compute 1, 2. And that's that's kind of the odd one out and where you have to do some extra thinking here. But if we put all that together and we run this, uh, part 1, it's like, wait, how do we get 7? 
Compute takes zero positional arguments, but two were given. Oh, this is supposed to be Compute Helper. Dang it. And of course, now this doesn't fit on screen. So do that. And those are all of those. And so if we run this, we get 3 and 36. I remembered correctly. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's that's how we'd implement part two. And again, like this this loop here is on, so there's nothing too complicated going on here. And since we're running this on loop five times, um, it's still on because a constant times uh, on is still on. But anyway, those are the solutions for part one and part two. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. And I will see you for the next day. Uh, but thank you for watching. Bye.